Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another Super Tease video. In this one, we're going to be covering everything to do with the Destruction Warlock, a first look at Dragonflight and what's going on. So far, by first glance, it's looking spectacular. It's looking amazing. There is a lot of cool and amazing returning abilities um, that are really going to solidify the identity of this specialization for the expansion. If you like this type of content and you want to stay up to date with everything World of Warcraft so you're always enhancing your experience, max then do please hit the subscribe button. It's just going to let you know when my videos go live. And I am also working diligently to try and get to the 100,000 subscriber mark by providing you uh, with excellent information, guides, updates, and news. But let's get started. There's a lot to cover. So looking at the Destro side, we've got Chaos Bolt, the classic. Not really anything new here. Reign of Fire, Conflagrate. But your first major choice is going to be between Mayhem, a new talent, which is single target spells have a 25% chance to just strike a nearby target. So just all of your single target spells can basically uh, have a chance to Havoc or your on-use Havoc. Now, in PvP situations, um, Havoc is really desirable because it lets you split your Mortal Coil and allow you to cast into two Chaos Bolts on two targets. It's like a classic PvP combo. Uh, but there could be really interesting synergies with Mayhem as well as Bane of Havoc, which is the AoE Honor Talent Havoc that lets you just shoot Chaos Bolts onto everything. And I don't know how that interaction is going to work. I don't know if they've even considered how that interaction is going to work. But if you have these passive cleaving chaos bolts on top of this on demand just melt an entire team type of deal it could be really insane something to take note of at the moment for pp situations i'm definitely gonna be sticking to havoc backdraft just providing you faster casting chaos bolts you can't go wrong there reverse entropy just providing you a random chance at haste infernal combustion chaos bolts going to consume five things of emulate to do in that much damage instantly um, so just amplifying your chaos bolt damage uh, whether or not you want to focus on like an incinerate build or a chaos build uh, is going to kind of be where you're going to, going to want to go with this specifically at the moment i'm leaning towards haste but we got to look at the way the modifiers work and everything like that towards the left side we've got a really tough choice between roaring blaze which is just a lot of good instant cast damage conflagrate it's going to increase uh your immolate incinerate and conflagrate damage to the target by 25 percent for eight seconds again that could have really good synergies with infernal combustion I'm um, getting a conflagrate, enhancing the emulate damage, and then consuming that emulate. That could be a really nasty combo. But improved conflagrate is going to give you another charge of conflagrate allowing you extra uh, backdrafts and ability to cast really fast. So it depends on how heavy you want to like go all in on being a one Chaos Bolt wonder, or if you want to be able to split your damage out into more reliable sources. Uh, combustion Engine. Conflagrate increases your remaining immolate damage by 15% until immolate expires. So again, focusing on that, there could be really powerful synergies. Um, now maybe I'm leaning towards that and maybe going into this and getting a massive Chaos Bolt into a Shadow Burn. And from some clips I've seen so far and some dueling and Dragonfly, of course, this isn't max level. I'm imagining it's not been tuned yet, but one core mechanic that I've missed from Destro when I've played it is the Shadow Burn Execute, getting somebody low and then blasting them off the face of the earth. So I am really hoping that Shadow Burn makes a return. we got Channel demon fire nothing really new here uh we've got soul fire 3.4 second cast i feel like it's gonna be really tough to fit this into situations at least for pvp um, so I'm kind of leaning towards not going after it. Pandemonium, Havoc's going to last three seconds longer, or Mayhem is going to have a 10% additional chance to trigger, which means 40%. 35% chance to just cleave, uh, cry havoc, chaos bolts duplicated by mayhem or havoc explode dealing targets within eight yards. So again, depending on if this bane of havoc works in PVP with the passive one up here, you might be able to just like get a chaos bolt that hits the whole team and then just <laughs> explodes and melts everybody. It could be insane. Like I'm thinking like Cobra battleground style, um, Destro warlock. Uh, there could be some really crazy stuff that you could do with this, um, specifically in PVP. And PvE, that's going to be really nice because you're just going to have a chance to do a lot of extra cleave. Uh, increasing the duration of immolate, just giving you more uptime. Um, it seems like it's pretty tough uh, to get connected to this talent, Backlash. And we'll get to it in a moment. But Raging Demon Fire, Channel Demon Fire is going to fire more bolts. Uh, and it's going to increase the duration of immolate on all targets hit. Conflagration of Chaos, Conflagrate Shadow Burn, have a 25% chance to guarantee your next cast of the ability to critically strike and increase its damage by your critical strike chance. So again, like a Shadow Burn instant cast type of build. Um, curious to see how hard it hits in PvP specifically, if it's going to be able to be used. Uh, we've got Rune, increasing the damage of Conflagrate, Demon Fire, Shadow Burn, and Soul Fire. So again, if you want to focus on that uh, Shadow Burn build, that's going to provide you a lot of instant reliable damage. Uh, Fire and Brimstone, Incinerate's now going to hit all enemies near your target for 7% of the damage. So just 
AoE Cleave, you're going to be really good in PvE and Mythic Plus situations. Chaos Shards, when you fill up a Soul Shard, uh, you have a 0% chance to generate an additional full Soul Shard over 2 seconds. I'm imagining that's higher than 0. Uh, Pyrogenics, enemies affected by your Reign of Fire take 5% increased damage from your Fire spells. And then that leads into Inferno, which is Reign of Fire is increased by 20%, has a 20% chance to generate a Soul Shard or Cataclysm. So it's pretty tough to get down into Cataclysm, if I'm honest with this talent tree, which has kind of like been a classic pick in PvP at least. For Warlocks, you have to go through a lot of like Reign of Fire talents, depending on how valuable Reign of Fire is in PvP, uh, and you're gonna lose out on getting kind of deeper into the tree, is my first concern. And also connecting into a returning ability, Backlash, which is gonna give you just a flat percent crit, but also physical attacks against you are gonna have a chance to make your next Incinerate Instant Cast. So this is kind of like the Alkin Frenzy for Moonkin, so if you're getting tunneled down in PvP, giving you access to some extra damage while just passive giving you some crit but it's connected by a lot of weird talents that you don't really want to get in pvp and considering it seems like it's a pretty pvp heavy talent having talents that you're probably not going to want in pvp leading into it feels really bad at the moment so you either have to go down soul fire um it seems really tough uh, to do that or you have to go down the improved immolate and then fire and brimstone for like aoe incinerates which is like meh or you have to go down the center where havoc lasts a little bit longer and then rolling havoc is two points each time your spells duplicate to havoc gain one percent increased damage for eight seconds it's only for eight seconds so like in pvp taking advantage of this window is like maybe a three percent increased damage increase to get down to backlash so it's like how how can we get down here? None of these spells feel good to get down to this thing that seems like a PvP specific one, so sorting that out is going to be a big problem because I think Backlash is going to be really good. Flashpoint, this is a battle for Azeroth, Azerite trade, and it was really powerful. It's just Imlite periodic damage um, is going to give you some haste. It is a lot less haste than the Azerite trade at that time, but it still was really powerful, so I've got my eyes out on that one. Eradication, Chaos Bolt increases the damage you deal to the target by 5%, 10% with 2 points. Ashen Remains, Chaos Bolt and Incinerate deal 5% increased damage to targets afflicted by Immolate. Um, so again, if you wanted to focus on that big Chaos Bolt build, um, you would get a lot of damage out of this onto your Chaos Bolts, probably really fat hits. Uh, we get down now into Summon Infernal Range, Embers of Diabolic, Incinerate now generates 100% additional Soul Shard Fragments, um, Ritual of Ruin, this is the instant cast Chaos Bolt, but it looks like it's not instant anymore, it's only going to be half speed, 50% reduction, but also it's free, uh, but this was really powerful effect. Uh, Crashing Chaos, Summon Infernal reduces the, uh, the Soul Shard cost of your next three Chaos Bolts, uh, Shadow Burn or Rain of Fire by one. That could give you a lot of Shadow Burn spam back to back to back to back to back. So this is what I mean by like, you got a lot of identities you're gonna wanna look at trying to build with this talent tree, a Shadow Burn Warlock, an all-in one-shot Chaos Bolt Warlock, uh, maybe just a consistent damage warlock with incinerate spam chaos bolts and summoning infernals type of deal uh, to take into consideration for what you want to do as to which one's going to be the best in any situation. Time will have to tell, uh, but that's kind of the identity and flavor that I'm getting so far from these talents. Infernal Brand, your Infernal's melee attacks causes target to take 15% increased damage from its immolation second 15 times. That's just a, a conduit right now, I believe. Power Overwhelming, consuming soul shards increases your mastery by 0.5% for 10 seconds. For each shard spent, getting a stack does not refresh the duration. So it could be tough to scale that out of control in PvP specifically. Uh, and then the final tree, we got Reign of Chaos, um, which is while your initial Infernal is active, every soul shard you spend has a 15% chance to summon another Infernal. This is really powerful in PvE. It got nerfed in PvP. I'm not sure how good it's going to be uh, in PvP specifically. Wilfred Sigil of Superior Summoning. Every soul shard you spend reduces the cooldown of your summon Infernal by one and a half seconds. Yeah. Yeah, Chaos Incarnate, Chaos Bolt, Reign of Fire, Shadow Burn always gain maximum benefit from your Mastery Chaotic Energy, so you're no longer going to have RNG elements of this. I'm not sure if there's any RNG in your Mastery in PvP, so I don't even know if this talent does anything in PvP. Somebody who's been maining Destro is going to have to tell me that, but this is either insanely good in PvP or completely irrelevant. You don't have to care about it. Uh, Madness of the Ajakir, this is the really powerful PvP legendary for Chaos Bolt damage. Chaos Bolt damage is going to increase by 12% and reduce the cast time of your Chaos Bolt, and you can put two points into this. It's also going to buff your Shadow Burn damage, so you might be able to double dip in here with a Shadow Burn Chaos Bolt build, which is exactly what I would want for my Destro lock. Uh, Master Ritualist, Ritual of Rune requires two less Soul Shards spent, so instead of 15, it's going to be uh, 12, 13, and then 11. I don't know if that scales up anymore. We're not max level here on the on the alpha. Burn to ashes, Chaos Bolt, and Reign of Fire is going to 
Rain of Fire, increase the damage your next two incinerates by 15%, stacks up to four times. So you could get some really big incinerates, and when we get to the normal talent tree, you'll start to see that. Avatar of Destruction, when Chaos Bolt or Rain of Fire consume a charge of Ritual of Rune, you summon a Blasphemy, which is that uh, purple Infernal at the moment. Got to see if it stuns in PvP, because that's the main reason it was good in PvP, was the stun. Now that the stun's not there, um, maybe it's not as good. And again, that was really good uh, with Reign of Chaos as well, to just get a bunch of Infernals under the map. Kind of have to wait and see. I, I do like the vibe. I think Backlash should be moved around, because it's like a PvP-focused talent which a bu with a bunch of talents that are like really tough, and you feel like you're sacking a lot. Um, you're also going to probably have to give up Cataclysm in order to get these really powerful end uh, stone talents in pvp specifically but if you're able to pump out some massive numbers and uh, get the classic chaos with shadow burn combos off with destro lock then i'm going to be very pleased with it and when we look at the normal talents you're going to start to see even more powerful effects uh fell down for warlock to be able to resummon their pets and it also seems like there's a heavy focus on getting warlocks away from using the pet that they've normally been using which is the fell hunter in pvp we've got burning rush as an option if you want to get that sprint effect I'm not sure if this will actually end up being uh, too effective, at least when it comes to PvP. we got Demon Skin, just passive regeneration. Can't really go wrong with this. Of course, the Mortal Coil is kind of the classic for Destro Warlock, especially with Havoc, um, cleaving on two targets, and then Spell Lock, which means that our Fell Hunters are no longer Spell Locking, which means we're either going to be playing Imps for Dispelling stuff, um, Succubus for Seducing, obviously. I wish they'd add some extra stuff to void walker because neither void walker has just got no use in pvp at all anymore maybe like bringing back a disarm um would make i mean maybe Duster's too op at that point i don't know but um it feels like void walker is just not offering very much and hasn't for a long time we have the amplify curse uh which was the pvp talent now moved into the baseline tree so really powerful when there's no decurse effects in pvp you can make a cast time really long or a snare really heavy we've got flat stamina which is just always good value um, with all of our passive region and shields filling a soul shard increases the haste of your primary pet Again, your pet's maybe not going to be too valuable. you got to get a lot of drain life healing in order to get Demonic Circle, which is kind of a baseline spell, which is a little bit of an, a, a bit annoying uh, at the moment because drain life is not really used that much as Destro. Um, so it kind of feels a little bit bad to do that. Wrathful Minion, filling a Soul Shard increases the damage done by your primary pet. Again, not really too worried about our pet damage unless um, Imp ends up doing a lot of damage, which can, I think, as Destro. Be interesting to see if it ends up doing that. We've got Demonic Fortitude, increases you and your pet's maximum health. Uh, so if people are going after your pet, you'll likely want that. And then Banish, which now will be able to talent into greater Banish to increase its duration and also affect Undead. Could be really powerful against Death Knights, other Warlocks. Uh, Foul Mouth, reducing the cooldown of Amplify Curse. Desperate Power, Drain Life's going to heal you more when you are lower health. Sweet Souls, which is like legion uh azurite tra artifact trait where your allies can hellstone for you which is really good because you're going to be really be a target as a destro lock in pvp specifically so that's going to be nice uh when you hellstone you get leech not super happy with this one demonic gateway it's it's all right nightmare when fear ends the target's going to be slowed again you got to get a lot of points into stuff that's not very good and to and then two points to get something that's not very good you're probably going to want to avoid nightmare um, now we've got Dark Pact, really mandatory heal. They've nerfed Unending Resolve Baseline, which is important to note. It's a three-minute cooldown, only 25% damage reduction. So you have to talent in order to get it back to 40%, or you can talent to get a lower cooldown, but it's only 25%, and it's still a two-minute. So you're probably more often than not going to want to increase the value of it because you, you sometimes die through it anyway. So if it was any weaker... Uh, it'd be rough. Mind you, if you went for the lower cooldown, you'd also get the Aura Mastery if you wanted to be a really aggressive Destro. Really depends on the meta and, and how things play out. We've got Shadow Fury. We've got Icker of Devils. Dark Pack sacrifice only 5% of your current health for the same shield or reducing its cooldown. So again, getting 45 second cooldown Dark Pack could be really powerful. Drain Life Healing, again, really good for Af, but for Destro, not too appealing. Uh, we got Grimoire of Synergy, which I believe was for Demonology mostly. Maybe all locks could get it, but I think it was a Demo heavy one. Damage done by you or your Demon has a chance to buff the damage of the other. So this could be really good. It's 10% more damage. Uh, and then we've got Shadow Flame making a return for an AoE Snare. Um, could be really good with double melee DPS. Like right before you want to port, you drop a Shadow Flame. Uh, and then the enemies can't immediately reconnect you when you portal back behind the pillar or use a gateway. So this could be very effective. Um, I'm starting to think that as Destro, you're probably leaning towards Amplify Curse over the Drain Life stuff. 
uh, but we'll just kind of wait and see. Teachings of the Black Harvest, which now our pets are going to get bonus effects. Singe Magic from the Imp is going to provide 4% damage reduction. That's a really minor, like a really, really minor, not going to be doing too much. Um, we also have the Void Walker, which is also getting something that's not really impressive. Tempor temporarily increase current and maximum health by 30%. Um, use this, I believe this is only for your Void Walker. Um, as I've just activated the ability and yeah, it's only for your void walker. So, I mean, maybe if it gave you the health, um, that would be all right, but it's just not very good. Uh, fell hunter reduce the cooldown of devour so you can get more purges that that could be effective. But I, again, it thought that they wanted to shift us away from using fell hunter. So it's odd that fell hunter gets like the best one. Um, Syed or succubus reduce the cooldown of seduction by 10 seconds and cause the target to walk uh, to the target faster. So this is a really powerful effect on Destro and wrath of Lich King because your seduce has no cooldown. So this might make seduce play for Destro really good. Um, and then we can't get a fell guard. And then finally, the return of Soul Link. Um, so you're going to be able to get some extra passive damage reduction, which maybe is going to alleviate the fact that your ending resolve isn't that powerful. Maybe you can go for the lower cooldown one. Um, but Soul Link is a really pivotal returning spell for all warlock specs here other than demo because you, you had it before sorry demo you're gonna have to share we got soul burn making a return so you can now soul burn port which removes snares and you can sprint really good for getting away from melee dps it was tough to do before or if your gateway gets stopped you have to emergency gateway and reposition it you could soul burn for a gateway you can soul burn for a drain life to get a shield on top of it soul burn for a health a funnel emergency heal in your pet um, or soul burn health stone which is going to increase the healing of it and will also increase your maximum health like a battle master effect was your soul burn really loved soul burn for these types of unique utility mechanics really happy to see it return here uh pact of the imp mother each time your primary pet or grimoire sacrifice deals damage the damage is increased by one percent up to five percent but it will reset uh soul conduit every soul shard spent has a chance to be refunded pact of annihilin rain of fire deals five percent increased damage to enemies affected by immolate and then inquisitor's gaze which i'm really curious to see because it's not yet implemented again if you want to see that type of gameplay this is just a first look make sure you're subscribed um and i'll be bringing this type of gameplay we're going to see what all the abilities do what the spells look like uh here on the channel pact of the eridar chaos bolt increases the damage of your immolate by five percent so again this could have really big impacts between what we talked about earlier with chaos bolt increased based on your immolate now your immolate's increased based on your chaos bolt and they can feed into each other and then summon jailer which i believe is the legion azurite trait where it's like souls appear on the ground randomly and then you can pick up these souls um and then we can do damage I don't know if this will end up being good in PvP. In PvE, I'm imagining it's going to be pretty powerful, especially if there's constantly like ad spawning or trash pulls and stuff like that, but kind of wait and see. The one that's really highlighted is the return of Dimensional Rift, which was the Legion artifact ability for Destro, which you just summoned portals that blast somebody. Um, so while you're kiting away, just summon those portals or summon those portals in while you're going for burst damage. It seems like all of the good qualities um, for Warlock are making a return here in Dragonflight. All the extra utility, defense, some interesting new combinations with a bunch of different kind of flavors of warlock that you're going to want to go after into its unique tree which looks really appealing again my main points of feedback so far for this talent tree would be that backdraft is heavily blocked by a lot of pve talents i don't know understand really how this mayhem is going to work with bane of havoc in pvp you have to wait and see demonic circle being attached by drain life talents feels strange because drain life for destro is not you're probably almost never going to press it. Um, so having to sack two talents to be able to get that feels a little, a little bit sad. Um, even trying to go after these pet ones might be more interesting. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. Either way, Destro is looking like a phenomenal spec. Warlock's looking like a great class right now. So definitely worth checking out. If you're worried about what's your class looking like, I hope that this video has helped solidify what it's looking like so far. Other than that, thank you very much for watching the video. I will catch you in the next one.